Chess players have great memory skills. This is because of memorizing numerous combination of moves and potential outcomes. But how they are able to memorize these moves? So when you observe two people who are playing a chess match, you might see one person will be losing until the end of the match. But at the last moment, he would win the whiz. So how this actually happens? So today in this video, I'll be talking about how to scientifically memorize 12 plus books for CSAR net examinations. So this is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So click onto the subscribe button as well as onto the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time when we post a video. So come along with me and let's talk about the complete topic in detail. A quick task or exercise for all of you who are watching out this video. So you can just take up the task and let's do it together. I'm going to show you 10 list of items and you have to memorize all the 10 list of items. So let me show you that you can pause the video for one minute, but not more than one minute. All right. So now I want all of you to recall what are the 10 items you have seen. Uh, you can just tell it verbally or you can write it in a piece of paper. And I believe that almost 50 to 80 percentage of the item that you have seen, you might have remembered, but very few would have reached 100 percentage of the items. Correct. Now, let me show you all the items in the form of an image. So now I'm going to give you one minute. Please don't take more than one minute. If you want, pause the video for one minute and try to uh, recall it again. Now, all right. Now try to recall all the items in the image that's given. So now you might have come to a conclusion like you might be able to learn a little more than before. So this visual one that you have seen here will help us to understand one thing is like, uh, it is not about how many items you are actually seeing through the visual image, but how fast you are able to see the visual image. Okay. Suppose let me give you an example of one thing like water hemlock, which is the most poisonous plant in the entire world. Suppose if I tell you water hemlock alone, you would not be knowing uh, this is the plant that is very poisonous. But if I do the same thing of showing you this image, which is water hemlock, whenever you see this plant, you will never ever go nearby that plant. This is the technique of having a visual imaging. Whenever you go and study in for CSA or net preparation, it's always important. You try to learn any concept from unit number one to unit number 13 by visual concepts. Like you can have it in the form of a visual charts. You can have it in the form of a images or anything that's going to be colorful because we are visual learners. So whatever you're going to learn, very tough concepts can be made very, very easier through visual learning because we are visual learners from our ancestral time itself. Okay, so let me give you an example of how this visual learning can help us in CSAR net examination. So let me give a few of the examples. So first, let me take you to this biochemistry. This is from the Leninger book. So there is competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition, mixed inhibition. So here there's no return things. You're just seeing the image. So we are going to talk about virtual learning, how this visual learning can help in your CSAR preparation. So you're just seeing one enzyme which has an active site and a substrate and an inhibitor. So there is only one site, both the substrate and the inhibitor are competing for the same site. This is competition for one site. Next one, uncompetitive inhibition, they are not going to compete with each other. They have two sites, so substrate will go and bind to one site, inhibitor will go and bind to another site. So it is uncompetitive inhibition. Now let's see mixed inhibition. Mixed inhibition, there is an enzyme which has an active site and there is a substrate. So enzyme and substrate will usually bind, but enzyme and inhibitor can also bind or enzyme substrate complex along with inhibitor can also bind. So by doing, seeing this virtual or visual learning, I'm getting to understand what is competitive inhibition and competitive as well as mixed inhibition by seeing only the image itself. Now, let me show you whenever you go in for biochemistry, it's always important you look at the chemical structures. So let me show you ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. You're seeing a ribose sugar here, which has onto the second position OH and adenine residue, six amino purine, and you have three phosphates attached here. So that you will not forget what is uh, DATP and you will not forget what is ATP. In DATP, you will not have this O group here. So this is a visual method of learning. Then when we come in case of amino acids, it's always important what is going to be the R group. So alanine, you have to know CH3. So you know amino and acid. So amine group and acid group is there. So alanine is going to have CH3, serine CH2OH, and then tyrosine is going to have a phenolic group. And then cysteine, one carbon and one sulfur is going to be attached. Aspartate is going to be an acidic group. 
so which has one uh, ch2 group over there so histidine is going to be the structure so you can incorporate the same visual learning in our books also from the unit number 1 to unit number 3 so whenever you're going to read don't ever write only the pointers always write in the form of a visual imaging so because we are visual learners from our ancestral period itself which is what we know that whenever you see some beautiful things we always remember it until the last period of time so we are visual learners so this is one of the scientific method of learning any concepts easier even the complete book also okay next one let's move on to the next one now you are going to try it out i'm going to show you a list of symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria which are nodule formers just remember this one and the symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria which are non nodule formers i'm going to give you one minute time if you want you can pause the video for one minute but not more than one minute all right now i'm going to tell you a story and let's go in for this one so there is a plant which is nodulated understand nodule plant and there is a person called rahul Rahul is traveling to Australia. Rahul is traveling to Australia, and he is going to buy something there. Rahul traveling to Australia. Rahul Australia, and he is going to buy something that is going to be pencil and scissor. So Rahul is traveling to Australia to buy pencil and scissor. So I am going to tell you a story. The plant is not related. Rahul is traveling to Australia to buy pencil and scissors, and after that he is returning back to India. So Ragul is returning back to India to meet Nancy and three aunties, and why he is returning back to India is he wanted to unnodulate the plant which is actually nodulated. So now let's understand how it actually works. So whenever you study something, you can frame a story. So if you understand a story, it will be very easy for you to understand it. Okay, now there is a plant which is nodule, which means symbiotic bacteria which is involved in nodule formation, and Rahul is traveling to Australia. and he is going to buy pencil and scissor because he is going to buy a scissor mainly to come and cut the nodules in this way we'll keep it and the second one is symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria non nodule why he is coming to india he has to remove the nodules so he is meeting nancy and three aunties so that they will help so you have to remember nosta cannabina azospirillum and acetobacter so now let's understand rahul australia is going to buy something pencil and scissor these all whichever happens in australia are going to be nodule formers just learn it along with me and then after coming to india he is going to meet nancy and three aunties for help so that he will unnodule the plant by this you have learned almost all the microorganism rhizobium azo rhizobium bradi rhizobium photo rhizobium and cyano rhizobium and then nostoc anabena azospirillum acetobacter So by doing this, you have learned all the symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria, which means our brain has virtual visual learning. Along with that, whatever you learn it in the form of a story, it will be stored for a long period of time. So next time, do not ever forget the nodule formers symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria and the non-nodule formers symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. Okay, the next one for you, try it out. So I'm going to give you one minute. Pause the video for one minute, not more than that. Now try to recall the complete thing. All right, now let's go for the story. So this is two people who wanted to live their life freely. So there were two angels. There were two angels who are very very bored. Two angels bored, and they're going to sing some classical song in three places: Karnataka, as well as in Bombay and Madhya Pradesh or Maharashtra. You can keep anything, Maharashtra. And after that, they wanted to go for a road trip to Chennai. and why they want to go for a road trip to chennai is they wanted to drink coffee apple juice along with that they want to eat noodles so understand now so there are two angels who wanted to be free and they were feeling very very bored and they want they singing classical song in three places so bombay maharashtra karnataka and they wanted to go for a road trip also to chennai to eat noodles and to drink apple juice and coffee now let's come back free living nitrogen fixing bacteria so two angels are always wanted to be free over here so two angels it is not acetobacter it is azobacter guys so azobacter azospirillum two angels very bored beigerenkia yes very bored and they wanted to uh, sing classical songs music so clostridium and they're going to three different places karnataka and bombay and the, or you can remember bangalore and then they're going to maharashtra and while they going they wanted to go to a road trip rose rhodospirillum and then they reached to chennai 
when they reach Chennai, they are eating noodles, apple juice and coffee. So this is a story which will make you to remember the complete free nitrogen fixing bacteria. So remember two angels are very bored. They wanted to go in for classical singing to three different places, Karnataka, Bangalore and Maharashtra. And then they wanted to go for a road trip to Chennai to eat noodles and to drink apple juice and coffee. By doing this, you will never forget all this microorganism. This is the way you have to study from unit number th one to unit number 13 whenever you find very difficult to understand anything. Okay, now, so what is this? Creative learning through visualization and story making. First one we have seen visual learning. The second one is through stories you can understand. It's not similar to that of a mnemonics. In mnemonics sometimes we forget the mnemonics itself. So it's better you have a story so that you have to imagine in the form of a story and you can correlate it. Okay. The next one flowchart tables and diagrams. The best way to learn for your CSAR net examination is always have some sort of flowcharts or some sort of tables and some sort of diagrams because whenever you see visually in the form of these things it makes things very very simple so you're seeing a complete experiment here but this complete experiment is going to explain about the Miselson stagels experiment so if you see this you will literally understand what exactly is going to happen in this experiment you don't have to read passages instead you can understand through the image itself this is one of the way to do it so a diagram can help you next one Tables, definitely a tables can make you to differentiate between things. So this is from Biotechnica flowcharts and tables. And the next one, you can go in for mind maps. The best way to go in for mind maps, because whenever you study in uh, CSIR net examination, you have so many contents and concepts to be studying, which you cannot even incorporate into notes like three, four pages itself. At times, what you can do, you can make a mind map like this. So it is ABC floral identity genes where all the informations are put in one place. So it is also very good to see. And you're talking about ABC model. What is this gene belongs to? What are the genes? And uh, what will happen if A gene is, class A gene is mutated, class B gene is mutated, class C gene is muted. So all the informations are put in one spot. So this will make us to remember anything in your book, whether from unit number one to unit number 18, wonderful scientific technique. The next one I'm going to tell you is memory castle or method of loci. So this is one of the important one many people used to follow. This is like people who love their home or love any places. Just visualize the concept. Suppose if I'm talking about a cell signaling pathway, GPCR pathway, or if anybody wants to learn RAS mechanism, just put all the concept in one one places. Suppose if you like uh, your upper roof, just put RAS mechanism, the complete flowchart in the form of an imagination onto the top wall. And you put nearby your table, like where you study your computer table, one concept. So whenever you see uh, those concepts like your roof or your computer table, just imagine what the tabulation or the flow chart is all about. This uh, technique, which is memory castle or method of loci is considered the very fastest method of learning most of the concept because if you love any places we would be directed towards that place so if you put some flow charts or tables or concepts or diagram into that place you will definitely remember so you can actually interconnect so you can imagine like um, ras mechanism and you can put a counter current mechanism you can do that or you can take in case of a plant you can correlate from photosynthesis in one place uh, respiration in one place plant hormone in one place uh, photoreceptors in one place and you can correlate everything together in one room so this is going to be the memory castle or the method of loci okay next one limiting the content and revise and discussing with your friend yes you don't have to study uh, too much of content in one page you don't have to read this bulk bulk books every time so whenever you're going to make a notes limit all the contents what is more important make it in the form of an image when you're explaining a concept draw some image like you can draw some series of an image and then limit all the contents if you're going to have a five page of your book don't write all the five page points similar to that in case of a two page or three page. Instead, make it in one page or half the page and draw and uh, just visualize the concept. And always try to revise whatever you have seen, like using your pre bike questions. Or if someone asks you, what do you think about this one? Just start revising. Wherever you go, if you find something correlated with that one, if you're talking about cell cycle, if a person asks you about what is the cell cycle, or if a person says they have a tumor, then just imagine how the cancer apoptosis take place. So just keep revising wherever you see the practical scenario and discuss something with your friends. Like whenever you want to discuss, when you start teaching, 
ultimately you are going to learn so you if you if you learn something teach to your friend so that you will never forget any point of time so i'm going to show you one example of how to make the complete content in one page so this is the regulation of carbohydrate metabolism you are seeing all the pathway tabulation everything in one page itself you don't have to read some 5 6 10 pages everything is clumped up in one page this is biotechnical light so metabolism of glycogen and what's the difference between hexokinase and glucokinase and the regulation of liver and muscle glycogen metabolism and pentose pathway completely given so if you're going to learn something like this you will never be able to forget anything okay so this is all about what are the scientific way of learning anything faster so first we start off with the visual learning and then we talked about um, the story making learning flow charts tables mind maps and then we talked about the memory castle and finally we talked about limiting the content whatever you're going to study so when you're going to study in for your csa and net preparation always incorporate all the scientific methods that we've been talking about into your things thank you all of you for your time and if you like this video please like share and subscribe to our channel and very importantly what are the difficulties that you face when you are going to write the csa net examination what techniques you follow and what do you think which is the most effective technique when you study thank you all of you for your time